Okay, you ready? We have to do this. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Push, man. It's all in the ankle. Come on. Come on. You can do this. Push. Again. All right. You ready? Now you know what it's like to drive a Cobra. When looking for your own Shelby Cobra, you have a simple choice. Spend over a million dollars on an unrestored original, and very likely garage it forever, or do what everyone else does, and pick from one of the shops that honor the Shelby Cobra legacy by recreating the formula. This one is a Factory 5 Mark IV Roadster, and it began its life as a $20,000 box of parts, which gives you everything you need, other than an engine and a transmission and rear end, and wheels, and tires, and paint. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of stuff, but that customization is part of the Cobra owning journey. It also means that an average of 300 hours of your own labor later, you've likely ended up with a truly unique example. And even though the full build might command a Porsche Cayman base price, the result is a car that captures the spirit of the original Cobra. That is to say, it is one of the most off-the-wall, face-melting, ear-shattering, on-the-edge driving experiences that has ever existed. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. should feel different. Because compared to the smooth, high revving, double overhead cam German engines that James might be used to, this is a good old fashioned 427 stroker V8, or about seven liters of American displacement. But it's not all old fashioned. You see, where the carburetor was, the owner has actually fitted a Holly Sniper EFI system, which is kind of like a carburetor, but the fuel is controlled by sensors and a computer. More reliable and more power. But don't forget, even though that's a modern piece of technology. This is still a 520 horsepower, 6,000 RPM rear wheel drive bomb. Now I'm shifting with the five speed Tremec here. And on the original cars, the shifter itself is kind of bent over and off to a weird angle, which is perfectly normal in a lot of better cars. Jessica, 
And the reason it was like that was because the transmission was so far back. But the way Carol Shelby solved that, he grabbed the shifter from the 65 Mustang and just turned it 180 degrees. But the owner of this one's done a straight one, which is actually very pleasant to use. The clutch, on the other hand, is insane. You go to war with it every time you push it down. It's the stiffest clutch I've ever used. My leg is already tired. And yeah, Thomas is right. You can rev to 6,000 RPM, but you can't ever floor it. You really can't. I mean, for you guys, I'll give it a little go. No, no, you can't. You can't, you can't do it. Oh my God. Oh, there's poo. There's poo. Someone's pooed my pants. That sound is absolutely absurd. It's like controlling every version of artillery ever made. You downshift and there's cannon fire. has a four inch tubular ladder frame, just like the cars in the 60s, except this has obviously been designed and built with more modern tech. So it's stiffer, but still light. And on top of that, we have aluminium, which means altogether, this weighs less than my 2016 Miata. And the owner and builder of this one has opted to use donor parts from a 2015 or later Mustang. So this actually has independent rear suspension. That, combined with the modern tech, means that this is safer than it's ever been. And yet, it's not even safe in the slightest. Uh, because not only does everything happen through the fog of noise and vibrations, I don't know if you've noticed, but my head is also a couple inches away from the steel roll bar behind me, which means that I could get rear-ended by a child on a tricycle and still die. This is actually the least protected I think I've felt in a vehicle since I drove a little Yamaha scooter in university. Can you please not tell anyone that? control, no ABS, no assists of any kind. And normally, when you start to lose traction, you can hear some form of wheel slip or tire squeal or something. You can't hear anything in this. All I hear is that. Ah! James actually lost it there before. Actually lost it. He came back to us pale. Didn't look too good. I'm serious. These are not, these are not for the faint of heart. This is not an all weather car. This isn't even a some weather car. This is a race car. A race car from an era of history where everything was dangerous. If you own one of these, you feel a connection, not only the, between the car and the road, but between you and the car. Because if you have one of these, you built it, probably know every in and out. So what's it actually like to drive? Well, you've heard about the power, but the steering is unassisted and the engine is completely behind the axle. I'm feeling everything. And once you get over the insane volume and insane power and like telepathic throttle response, it just becomes a, a small sports car. Like we said before, this has independent rear suspension, which
which means the rear end is actually very predictable and very compliant. That said, I haven't been able to figure out the understeer oversteer characteristics. Is if you even consider putting your right foot down, it's all oversteer. It's like a switch. The more I drive it though, the more I get used to it. The more I start to like it. But could I live with it? Not a chance. <laughs> Sorry. You're talking to a guy that owns a two liter Alfa Romeo. And James has a Miata for Christ's sake. I feel like I haven't eaten enough red meat to own one of these. But I could look at it all day. I'm just gonna check something. Ready? Yep. You're, what do you mean, yep? I have more chest hair than when I started the day. Oh, I can't believe you guys fell over this stuff. Okay. <laughs> it is, sorry, it is a scary I... car. It's a very scary it's car. The, this is the most insane car I think we've driven. We've driven some insane cars. Yeah. A, a Lamborghini Aventador, right? Uh, what did we just drive? Oh, Viper. The, the Viper ACR. The AC Mono. The AC Mono, crazy. This is on the other side of danger. Because yeah, it's just not safe. <laughs> no, it's just I not know. safe. Look at this. It, it's just makes like you, a hammer. It makes you feel alive. Does um, it? It's not scary to look at, though. Ow! Yeah, exhaust. Well, that's why I went through the practice for that. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not scary it's to look right at. It's right there. It's huge. It's beautiful, and it people, is. and it gets so much attention. We've said that about the IA. And Next the, level attention. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. What's and people come over at car parks? What's that? You know, how did you build that? What is it? You yeah, know. Kids want to know what it is. Dads already know what it is. There's always there's like the questions. Well, right? it's confusing because you know obviously it's not a real one. The real one's a million dollars plus. Yes, yes. As we've said, but it's not a resto mod either. No, that's that's a that's a bit of a confusing topic. It's not a resto mod. Resto mod is when you take an actual class and restore it and restore it with modern parts. Right. This is a custom build. I don't even like using the word replica because they've taken on their own thing, right? Like these things, like the, well, there's the, such the, a culture of exactly. These now. And the idea behind this is that anyone can own a Cobra because yes. you know, if you what, can build a car. Exactly. Whatever <laughs> kit you buy, the yeah. idea is it's affordable. It's not actually that affordable. That the, the owner is eighty grand into this. Which way am I going? This there, way. There you go. Yeah. So everything is custom, everything's a decision. It's all a built, not bought culture. That's the whole point of this. Like, like every part of this, uh, a lot of thought and choice has gone into. And like every piece of it becomes its own kind of display, right? Like this is the shiniest alternator I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and, and like the interior as well, like it's just so good to look at. Well, they, a lot of the, they're trying to make it true to the originals, right? So yes. there's like the replica wheels. Yep. It's even got the historically true fuel cap with yes. the, yeah, the glipper thing. It's very cool. I, it, ooh. It makes a noise. Uh, but when you get this, obviously, <laughs> it's unpainted. Right. So, so one of the biggest decisions with the Cobra buy, or Cobra builders is, what do I make the scheme? Everyone wants the stripes, they got the yeah. thing. This, these are actually BMW colors. Oh, really? Yeah. I like this color scheme. I like, the, I like the subtle stripe, personally. I think it just looks, these look great in dark colors. Right, because it's just this kind of like angry looking little thing, right? Yeah. No, I, I, I love every, every part of this car. From every angle. From every angle. I think personally, if I owned one, I would be the guy that people make fun of and I would put a headrest on it. Because I just- A headrest and another, and another- um, Another loop. hoop. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hoop. like it doesn't look as cool, but like- Just don't want to die. Yeah, I just don't want to die, you know? Well, that's, the good news is there's a lot of modern safety tech inside. Oh, really? <laughs> nope. Yeah, no. Feels like death. Yeah, yeah, this is like a little, a little mini coffin. But it's authentic. We've got the wood and aluminium steering wheel. We've yep. got the bullet style racing single wing mirror. Yeah. The pedestal mounted rear view yep. mirror. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Just drop the authenticity. It's very authentic in here. It is, it is great. Drop it, mate. It's so important. <laughs> Listen, I just, I, most people don't ever get to sit in a Cobra. So let's just describe what it's like to actually be in one. Okay. What's well, the what, one word? Go. Close. Yes. Everything, Everything feels crazy. really close. This this door panel, I'm not a huge guy, right? No. I mean, like, I'm, I'm a But you have to drive with your elbow iron. over. Yeah, you have to, you have to. There's no, otherwise, you're hitting it, right? Yeah, the these, seats are quite comfortable. They are actually very comfortable. This there's, is the optional leather seats. There's no headrest. These are like a tubular frame. You can actually feel the frame inside the seat. I've got a place you can rest your head once. Once, yeah, you get one. Briefly. <laughs> yes. And like the, the, the transmission and tunnel and the end, the firewall are huge. Like your, your yeah, feet, your, your feet go are this way, way over there. They go over here, right? It, it's, it's, a, it really, it's a really unique experience. It's very classic. It's connected. Yeah. Connected. Yeah, because the exhaust outlet is literally right beside my ear. Um, no. uh, yeah, I'm fine with that being off right now. After, after the driving we've done, the I have a headache. The intensity. Yeah, yeah. It's a, here's the thing. 
I really like these cars. I think they're really, really neat. But like, you, there's a horn. Yep, they get good for you. You found it. There's also a lot of toggle. I love toggle switches. Speaking of toggle switches, the the turn signal is a toggle switch. I, I always forget. To turn it is off. impossible to remember because it, it only shows up on these tiny it's green little, lights. Little green lights. So you got to turn it off when you go around the corner. Also, it doesn't. You just have to know which way is left and right. Well, it matches the, the steering wheel direction. Yeah, so, so if you go to the right, you click it down. Exactly. Go to the left, click it up. Um, yeah, no, I, I think like, like for me, this is a very intense experience. In terms of like an ownership experience, I don't know. I feel like the guys that own these are, they love Cobras. Yes. And they, they build them and they live and they breathe this, this world and this life. And they all have a story. They all have a story. That's probably the coolest part, right? Is that like owning one of these is not just like, oh yeah, I have a Cobra. No one says that. No. It's like, oh, let me tell you about my Cobra. Right, and it, I, I don't know if I don't know if I could if I could uh, it, without building one, I feel like I would have a hard time connecting to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I feel like if I was going to do one of these, I would want to build one. Okay, right? I get that. I get that. That said, yeah. if I was to build one, it wouldn't look that dissimilar to this. I love everything he's done here. I, I even prefer this type of shifter to the to the bent one. Yeah, yeah, which and is it, still fine. Totally the, normal. The, the, totally normal. The no glove box is very clean. I do like that as well. Um, no, this is, I agree. If I was going to build one, it would, it would honestly look very, very, and I'm, I'm a sucker for wooden steering wheels. I love the, I got one of my Alpha. I love the, the gauges. The enough. gauges, it's so cool. Quite obviously, this is, without question, always someone's pride and joy. Yes, and that's what makes Cobras cool, I think. And pride and joy is right. We meant it when we said that each one had a story. In the case of today's, it was a classic father and son project that reached completion just in time for the son's wedding day. So, like many others, this Cobra holds a very special place in the owner's heart. It is, however, a special place that is a complete assault on all of the senses. I say all because it has the added smells of the fumes it creates while idling, as well as the taste of fear on your tongue every time you put your foot down. When we say we've never driven anything quite like it, we mean it. But we were relieved to find out that our growing embarrassing need for Advil by the end of the day was totally normal. In fact, Advil is right up there in the unofficial Cobra handbook, alongside goggles, eye drops, and earplugs. And while it sounds undesirable to own a car for which you require blocking your eyes and ears to use, for the lunatic Cobra owners of the world, it's everything they've ever wanted. More power to them. Unfortunately for James, that will never be. Because not only did it overpower him, it eventually overpowered his voice box. My voice box? Thomas, you're not talking about the backup takes at the end of the day that went wrong. Because if you are, you said you had deleted those. Yeah, I lied. Nah, 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 come on, don't do me like that. I know it might be funny. Thomas, is there any amount of money I could pay you for us to not show- And I'm Jane! You can! You, you, you can, 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 you can